We are, we're going to finish, we're going to conclude today the Chinuch Katan, which is the, um, the introduction to Shayich Vamona. So we're on page Ayin Vav, which is opposite of page 150. So, so far we spoke about, the Chinuch Katan is based on the Pasuk, Chanoich Lenar, I'll be dark gam ki yaskin le yasr mimena. And the Alter Rebbe asks on, on this uh, Pasuk, as we spoke, that... Um, what is the greatness of the fact that you educate a youth according to his way and Gam Kiyaskin also as he ages he doesn't move away from the education of his youth which is because when you're educating a youth you're doing it you're not giving over Mamish the highest most mature level but you're giving over a level something which is Shaykh for the child so why is it a, what's the Malyus on the words of the Alter Rebbe what's the advantage that also when he ages, he doesn't move away from it. So the Alter Rebbe then proceeds to tell us about there are two different levels in Avas Hashem, and one level in Avas Hashem. Excuse me, one level in Avas Hashem is the lower level. Is the level um, actually the Alter Rebbe begins with the higher level? The higher level is a level which is a very high level. It is the revelation of the essential love of the Neshama to Hashem. But not everyone is zeicha to this. The Alter Rebbe says this is like Kain Kibul Schar. This is mamish uh, like me'ein elam haba, and most people aren't the zeicha to this higher level of ava. But then there's a lower level of ava, and the lower level of ava comes through his boyninus, through contemplating Hashem's greatness, and uh, thereby you arrive his greatness and his love for us, those two elements, and thereby you come to arrive at a reciprocal ahava Hashem. Then the Alter Rebbe says, brings out the pasuk sheva yipoil tzadik vikam, which means that um, even a tzaddik has nefilas, even a tzaddik has, uh, I guess the literal translation of nefila is a downfall, but over here it means, um, yeah, it means um, a lapse. And what, and what, but what al Rebbe says, that's not just, uh, oh, the, the tzaddik is going strong and strong and strong, and boom, suddenly he falls. No, al Rebbe says that every single person is a mahalich, and that's what makes the human being the human being. Is that well, we, are, we are what is called mahalchim. And therefore, we're always moving to higher levels. And we say to higher levels, not only to sequentially higher levels, but quantum. We make quantum leaps. We go to completely, uh, to completely a new place. And between one level and a level which is quantumly higher, I don't know if that's a word, that could be. but exponentially higher, that's a fine there's a nefila. There's an afila. We spoke about this last time. We gave some examples. Because right now you've perfected one level in your service of Hashem. And now you're trying to achieve and attain a completely new level. Not, you're not trying to uh, move from point, you're at uh, level 8 in a certain avoida. Now you're trying to move to level 9. We're talking about a completely new avoida. And to arrive at a completely new avoida, you need to remove yourself from the first avoida. You need to have an ayin. You can't preoccupy yourself in your new avoda while you're still involved in the old avoda because the old avoda is going to disturb your new avoda. Remember, we gave an example of Rabzeira. We gave an example of Rabzeira that when he went, this is Mama Shabikavit. Oh. <laughs> you asked me specifically, so I okay. said a return. <clears throat> okay. The timing is right. Yeah, that's it. So he mentioned that Rabbi Zayra, when he went up to Eretz Yisrael, and he, he fasted, whether it's 40 fasts or 100 fasts, depending on the gears of the Gemara, he wanted to forget the whole Talmud Bavli, in order that he should be able to properly be able to study and learn Talmud Yerushalmi, unencumbered and undisturbed by his previous understandings and paradigms. I mean, that would interfere with his understanding of Yerushalmi. Sorry? He, if by he we still have the Bavli in his mind. That would interfere him his ability to understand you. I'll give you an example. To give, to give you an example. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. This is obviously not uh, Bavli and Yerushalmi are both levels in Kedusha. But to, uh, an example, when a person comes and asks you a question, someone who isn't exposed to Torah, mitzvah, someone who grew up in a secular household, and they come and they ask you a question, um, you know, why can't women be rabbis? Or... Uh, all these different uh, other types of sensitive questions. It's very, very difficult to answer them. Why is it difficult to answer them? After all, 
we have answers. We're not bothered by these questions, we have answers. But the problem is, is that we have a completely different mindset. Our whole philosophy, our whole value system is different. As long as that person is holding on to his or her own value system and just trying to take your answer and digest it in the context of their current value system, it's not going to work. How does it work? The person, in order for it to happen, the person really has to completely set aside all their preconceived notions and all their previously held ideas of what's right and what's wrong and what's a value and what's not a value and what's the purpose of life and then they're ready to open to, to enter into a new area but as long as they're still tethered to and attached what they had beforehand they can't really assimilate and be able to accept the new things that they're getting it's a, because it's like a quantum leap they have to you have to move away from where you are like Moshe Rabbeinu said Asura Mikan Sometimes if you want to leave Skar of Lasham, when he Moshe saw the burning bush. So Rashi says when he said Asura Mikan, Asura Mikan, the Skar of Lasham. It sounds very simplistic. I mean let me move away from here so that I can go over there. But sometimes we try to move over there, but not move away from over here. And that doesn't work. In the words of Khsidis, between every yesh and yesh, between one yesh and another yesh, between two entities, there has to be an ayin in the middle. There has to be a nothingness, a state of vacuum. And that's the nefila that Sadik has. The tzaddik has moved away from the previous madriga. There, it's not just that the tzaddik is going boom. No, the tzaddik is going this way, and when they reach an entirely new level, so they are they have moved away from the previous level, but they have not yet mastered their new level, and that's why they're in what's called they're in a level in a state of nefila. And obviously, um, we're two days before um, before Rosh Hashanah. And this is something which is very relevant to Rosh Hashanah. But before we get to Rosh Hashanah, so. I think maybe I spoke about this once, but I didn't give over the full depth of the idea. I think I have asked in the past, Moshe, why is it that we sleep? Did I speak the Sikha that the Rebbe asks why we sleep? Do you remember? Ever made a clip out of it? Why we sleep, why we sleep? Why we sleep? yeah. Sleep for what? Yeah. Sleep why did Hashem create us in a way oh, that, uh, yeah. that a third of our life is spent unproductive? You know, talk about... Although you dream. You want, you want to start fresh and new. Right, I'll see you remember, but one second. <laughs> but, but that's not the full depth, that's why I'm repeating it now. But I would say about dreams. It when you sleep, there's a subconscious that dreams, and sometimes the dreams, you can act on them. But can you, but can you really compare their productivity of dreams as opposed to Torah and Mitzvahs? And uh, the, by the way, this is a question which from a secular mindset is a ridiculous question. What do you mean, why do we sleep? It just everything is, because it is. And from the secular perspective, from the scientific perspective, we analyze the facts and we try to deduce certain things. But we don't question, we don't go to the why. When why? Once, there is the, once we see what happens, we try to figure out uh, biologically or physically what it does for us. But, but from, uh, from a spiritual perspective, if we believe that if, from a Jewish perspective, I was created to serve Hashem, why would Hashem put me, uh, make me in, a, in such a state that a quarter of, of a person's life, we're talking about, imagine a person lives 70, 80 years, so we're talking about you know, 20, 25 years of life is spent in bed. 20, 25 years. That, how much could you accomplish in 20, 25 years? You know, we, we, we have a couple of kids in the meantime. McKenzie you know, we could, we could convince ourselves, you know, that if we end up with 20, 25 years, how much more we'd produce. The truth is, if we look at our waking hours and we have to, but at least theoretically, at least theoretically, it's a very valid question. So we answered last time, based on the Rebbe Sicha, that you need a break to get a fresh start. But the, the, the neshama go away and do something when goes up. Guf is asleep. Yeah. So then the 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 essence of our of us is awake. Then the shama. But are we producing? Us, are we? But are we producing? We were created to produce. And I guess you're not, you're not doing so then what is the neshama doing that we say that the neshama is awake? The neshama, as it's brought down in Kabbalah, shayevas lachaim is drawing down life, but is drawing life during that time. But then the, the question then, that is further, there's a question. Why did Hashem create us in a way that the neshama has to go up? Anyways, the bottom line is, the Rebbe says like this. The Rebbe says that every day is a new day. 
and therefore every day is supposed to be greater than the day before. In a quantum way, to a certain extent. In other words, because the truth is, my this we're always supposed to be moving up in Kedusha, even I, now I'm supposed to be better than I was last hour. But the idea, the reason why Hashem divided time into days is because every day is a new Aveda, every day you wake up, you say, Maida'ani, and you need to be able to separate from yesterday in order to be able to move up to a higher level today. So this is similar to what we're saying over here, that between the ayin, between the yesh and the yesh, there has to be an ayin between one madriga and another madriga. There has to be... You wouldn't have Shabbos if, every, if, 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 if there was no break between days and days. That's true, but also the, the idea of sleep, specifically the idea of sleep, is, um, is for this idea because we need to, we need to move away from... Um, You're not answering why it's the third of them. I understand, but apparently, apparently, 10 minutes, if you ever took a nap for 10 minutes, you know that when you wake up, you don't feel like you've completely... You're asking why, not once, you're right, now that's the way it is. You could have made a 10 minutes thing when you're sleeping. now you go, Hashem could have made that with 10 minutes, you'd feel completely disconnected. A valid question. He's talking about a quantum, you're talking about quantum, we need Yeah, so he's saying, but why 8 hours? It could be 10 minutes, it could be 20 minutes, an hour. Lepo, I, I, it's a valid question, but the, still the, the idea remains. And this is also relevant to Rosh Hashanah. Because the, if, you, um, if you turn to page 240, in Tanya Neger Sakodesh, page 240, so this is a, 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 a few lines of Tanya, which the Rebbe would quote very often. Which how many lines? Four lines from the bottom of page 240. Al Rebbe says, Shabakal Shana Vishana, every single year, who Uyr Khadash Elyon. Every single year there's a brand new supernal light that comes down to this world. The Uyr, which was renewed and was uh, illuminated in this world, this previous Rosh Hashanah. It goes away by Erev Rosh Hashanah, Haba, upcoming Erev Rosh Hashanah, this upcoming Matzah uh, Shabbos, right? And it goes to it goes back to its source. Back to? Its source, where it came from. Vizawa Shekasu, and that's why the Pasuk says, Mirashis Hashanah Vad Achrishana Levada. That's why it says, the Pasuk says that any Hashem Alek Echabad, that Hashem's eyes are upon. Eretz Yisrael, Meresh Sashana from the beginning of the year, Ad Achre Shana until the end of the year. And the Chayre, what should have said? Should have said, Lo Elam. No. It should have said, Hashem's eyes are in Eretz Yisrael forever. Why does he from the beginning of the year to the end of the year? But the answer is because every year the Hamshacha that comes down is a new one. So every year it's from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. But the Chayn that's why the Pasuk says, Meresh Chaser Aleph. The word Meresh, there's no Aleph over there. Reim is because this, this, the missing Aleph alludes Ali Stalkus Ha'er, the fact that the Ur is nostalgic, it, it goes away, Shemistalik Belil Rosh Hashanah goes away in the night of Rosh Hashanah, Ad Achrat Kiyas, till after the Tkiyas. Now listen to the, to the next words. Shayyirad Ur Chadash El Yen Yaser, now comes down after the Tkiyas, comes down, a new Ur, which is higher. Shaloi Hoya Meir Adain Mimei Oilam Ur El Yen Kazeh. Never in the history of the world was there such a high oil. Phenomenal. We have to realize Tafshin Pei is coming up. That means that in two days from now, there is going to come down into this world such an elevated light that the world never experienced. Because every year the world, it gets Mailam But the old one has returned. The old one returns and we get a new oil. But the new oil every single year is a completely high oil. This is something that I've spoke about often. Talking about a new year. And a new year, you know, we always talk about making a new, uh, new year, new resolutions, and new commitments. And we have to know also that there is reason to believe that even if last year I wasn't able to uh, uh, follow through on my hachlatis, uh, on my commitments, next year I will be able to. Why? Because next year there's a higher order than this year. So what I can accomplish next year, it will be much more than what I was able to accomplish this year. So where's the, where's the quantum leap? Do you need, this like you have a quantum leap from day to, not I mean, one day to another day. So the shana, 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 for our new year, is an even greater leap, even greater quantum leap. But what's interesting you notice over here is, there's no afsak here. There's not, what does he say? He doesn't say that the new air comes in and kicks the old air out, or a new air comes in 
and is added on to the old oyer. No, he says that an erev Rosh Hashanah. It goes back to its source. The old oyer. So then, the, and there's a vacuum. There's a vacuum until the key is. Oh, In fact, uh, Chsidus uh, even asks, no, no yes, the Chsidus, it's a big question. How does the world exist, Rosh Hashanah by night? The old oyer of the previous year left. The new oyer, the new higher oyer of the new year didn't come. And the answer Chsidus gives is, is that the world is running on fumes until the key is. What's fumes? What's that? Never heard that expression? Yeah. What? What? Like gas fumes. In other words, yeah, where did the fumes come from? No, so I'll explain. No, no, somebody hasn't slept for a like What happens is... Yeah. Global warming. Yeah. Global warming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the no, answer. No, somebody hasn't slept in 21 hours. So where it comes from? The, R, the old R? You, guy, you guys are ruining Ramesh's videos, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows how to get rid of it. He knows how to edit it. You know how to cut, right? Too much cutting. Anyways, I can pun him. Does he want to? By way of example. Yeah. This world exists because Hashem wants it to exist. What happens is, the, the Ur being mystolic means that we know, the Chassidus explains that every year when it comes Arab Rosh Hashanah or the night of Rosh Hashanah, Hashem loses interest in this world. Now, what happens if Hashem loses interest in the world? It would seem that the world should disappear right away. So we we'll vote. But hold one second. Let's, let's use an example of a human being. So let's say you are an avid stamp collector. So therefore, every single time you see a stamp, it's a new stamp. Who knows what stamps are? Like used to be. <laughs> Today we have emails, whatever. But like upon them, some some of you probably still remember what stamps are. <laughs> so, and the, now let's say one day you lose interest in collecting stamps. The next time you see an envelope, what's going to happen? You won't even look at it. No, you'll still take the stamp. Why? It's almost like muscle memory. It takes a little time for your lack of desire to translate into a change in behavior. It takes a little time. Right? In other words, whenever you lose interest in something, it's not something that happens right away. Then slowly it stops. So basically, Hashem loses interest in creating the world. Out of Rosh Hashanah, the world, but there's enough left over in the tank, so to say, to take you until key is residual, right? Like we're saying, the fumes. fumes. It's an expression that when the gas all ends, you can still go a little, the car can still go, because there's still the fumes gas, left. Fumes left. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay. I yeah. So the world is on fumes until Tkiyas, and by Tkiyas, if we do Tkiyas properly, really the world is hanging in the balance every single year on Rosh Hashanah, and if we do Tkiyas properly, then, then we're Mamshech this Oyer Chadash, we're bringing down this new Oyer, that's the purpose of Tkiyas Shefer. And that's why uh, it was always, um, Tkiyah Shafer is always something that the Tzaddikim always did. It wasn't just um, uh, someone who knew how to blow a trumpet, because it's a very big Avaidah. Tkiyah Shafer is a big Avaidah. But we see, once again, the point over here, that between one Madriga and another Madriga, there has to be a conscious moving away from the previous Madriga in order to be able to start on the new Madriga. And this is something which we see also when we get to Rosh Hashanah. And obviously this applies to us also, as we spoke last time, that we're all Mahalchim. We're all, we're all movers. We're all people, we don't stay in one level. In other words, not only we're ascending in, the same, in, in, in one area, we're going higher and higher, but we move to different, completely different areas. And there's no question that when it comes Rosh Hashanah, and um, the whole world is moving to a quantumly higher place, that's also, obviously, an appropriate time for us to also make a, a, a quantum move in our Avedis Hashem also. Why, I, I missed why you say, why do we sleep? Why do we, why do we, why does that have to do Rosh Hashanah? In, 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 in miniature, in micro, this idea happens every single day. In fact, if you look at, uh, if you go back to page two, um, 240 where we came from, the Al-Tarebbe continues and he says, one second, where is it? 150. If you go up to page 240. Yeah. Oh, two, oh, two back, you're going back to the camera. Yeah. He says, if you look, uh, go, if you go um, on page 240, first one in the line is Moichen, like a little more than halfway down from the top of the page. Where it says, yeah, with prati pratius. Saying in general, th it's, this is true about every single year. With prati pratius, kein hu bechol yoyim v'yoyim. Namshachem moichem v'yoyim yoyser bechol tefilas hashachar. In a more detailed way, this happens every single day. So obviously, it's not the same every day as it is in Rosh Hashanah, 
But as we know, in general, everything works in, in Yiddishkeit, especially when you learn Chassidus and Kaprimi Satera and Kabbalah, you see how everything there is the, is in the micro and is in the macro. The, 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 the way it is every single day and the way it is every single year and the way it is throughout a lifetime, the way it is throughout the course of Jewish history, everything, uh, all cycles work in big and in small. So this same cycle which plays out on a daily basis, that there is new, new air that comes every single day, but on a much larger scale that happens on Rosh Hashanah. How about months and months? Sorry? This would apply to month to month? Um, I, I haven't seen so specifically anywhere that it says so, but it's very likely. I would say it's very likely. How would that apply if it's likely? The same idea that every month is a new era, but I can't say that. But I can't say that for certain. I don't recall seeing that. Seen it. No, but interesting. That's also the Altarev explains in that in that letter why we know it says Tiku Bachoyde Shayfer Bakasa Liyem Chagenu. We know Bakasa means that it's hidden, and this is the the Chag, which is the which is Bakasa. The moon is hidden, and that's also connected to the idea of Rosh Hashanah that the previous oyer, the previous light becomes hidden. There's Bakasa, and we have to bring down and reveal an entirely new light. Yes? How does this idea uh, deal with the custom of sleep on Rosh Hashanah? Right. If it does. If we're saying that sleep is a separation between one day and the next, and we're sa- and does, does this fit in any, in any way with some... Um, I don't know if it fits in with the idea of sleep on Rosh Hashanah by day, but it, it does have to do with sleep. It has to do, actually, with the sleep of Adam Harishan on Friday. Because um, this is already going into very deep stuff, but this tardema that fell on Adam, this sleep is the whole world, is, so to say, in a sleep state until the tkiyas. And this replays itself every era of Rosh Hashanah. The world falls asleep, so to say. And we and don't. We typically, we specifically do not blow uh, the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. I don't know if that's related, but it's possible. Again, there's a lot of you know. The more you learn, together. yeah. And um, it's even related to the fact that on Friday afternoon, there are many tzaddikim who would go to sleep on Friday afternoon to reenact the sleep of other Marishim, which is related to the new chayis and air which comes in on Shabbos. So this is related to sleep also. It's brought down that um, the Altar Rebbe would fall asleep every Friday afternoon. And he had, he had a chassid, Rebbe Hillel Paracher, who would go to sleep every Friday afternoon. And the chassidim would say that's the difference. Rebbe Hillel Paracher would go to sleep on Friday afternoon. And the Alter Rebbe would fall asleep on Friday afternoon because the Alter Rebbe his, was Bedugma Shalmaila. So, therefore, automatically, since it's a state of sleep above, he automatically, his body fell asleep. Yeah. Adam Arisha did not go to sleep Friday. Hashem put on him Tardema, put on him sleep. And he took the Tselav, so he didn't go to sleep. They, they forced him to sleep. So, why it's related to us? It's not really. It's not really related to us. It's related to the situation in the worlds where Hashem forces us sleep on the worlds also. But th- this is deep stuff. Let's let's uh, let's let's keep to the simple stuff. Okay. I'm a simple person. <laughs> yeah, and I'm all sleep can be a big avoid to talk about sleeping on Friday afternoon. So the, there's a story that said that the Magid also, w- I don't know, would go to sleep or fall asleep every Friday afternoon. The, the Magid of Mezrich, the teacher of the of the of the Alter Rebbe, Alter Rebbe is the teacher. The teacher, yeah. Now the there are those who have the minig that I comes on Friday. They say Friday afternoon. They say Shir Hashirim in preparation for Shabbos. The the, the Magid had a Talmud. Whose name was Rabbi Aaron of Karlin, Rabbi Aaron Hagadol, Rabbi Aaron the Great, known for his, he was the author of uh, so. the Piyot Koach Seif, right? In fact, I'm like, to show how, how much he was respected and how much Chassidus came even synonymous with him, I was recently noticing that in the, you know, in, in the different letters of accusation against the Chassidim written by the opponents of Chassidim against the Alter Rebbe, the Chassidim are called the Kaliners. All the Chassidim are called the Kaliners. Kata Kaliners, the sect of the Kaliners. Why is that? Because he was a very... Uh, Rav Aaron Kalin was considered a huge leader of Chassidim, even though he had passed away many years earlier. Rav Aaron Kalin, I'm pretty sure, passed away... He was the father of the Stalmer. But the father of the Or the grandfather, no. Rav Aaron had a son, Rav Shloyma. And Rav Shloyma's son, I think, was a Rav of Stalin. 
But um, Rabban Karlin, I believe, passed away even before the Maggid, if I remember correctly. Someone said to me just last Shabbos, we were singing that Nugan, and someone said that the Maggid um, inspired him to write the, the, the Nugan, because he felt that he would be on the right level to capture Shabbos. I never yeah. heard that, but... Uh, Maybe not. Uh, uh, but it, so, it sounds right. All right. I mean, it sounds like it could be right. That's, uh, anyways, so Rabbi Aaron of Kalin was, was sitting in the base Madrash and he's saying Shir Hashirim. And suddenly in walks the, the Shamash, the attendant, the servant of the Magid, and tells Rabbi Aaron, the Magid wants you to stop saying Shir Hashirim because the Magid is trying to sleep because it was Friday afternoon. And your Shir Hashirim is making a tumult in heaven. And therefore, the, and, the, and that's disturbing the Magid sleep. Now, well, he wasn't in physical listening distance, but he said that your Shir Hashirim is making a, a tumult in heaven, and so therefore, please stop saying Shir Hashirim because the Magid wants to sleep. So, Siddham say that some people say that this is showing the greatness of Rabban of Karlin, that when he said Shir Hashirim, the whole heaven was, uh, was, a, was, a, was, a, was tumuling. But the truth is, this tells us the greatness of the Magid, that even though the Rabban of Karlin was making the heavens making a tumult in heavens with the Shir Hashirim, the Magid felt that his sleep was more important than that. So he told him to stop. Okay, anyways, yes. By Adam still says Shir Hashirim. I know all Shir Hashirim by heart. That's amazing. It's amazing. You dis you disturbing us. There's a... <laughs> it's, a it's a beautiful minute. Yeah. Since I was a kid, I was always a Shir Hashirim. Shir Hashirim is Kodesh Kadashim. You know the Gemara says that. Yeah, yeah. Mishnah says that. Kodesh Kadashim. In fact, the Alter Rebbe, so the Mamaram we have from the Alter Rebbe, the main main two Sfar Mamaram we have is Lakutia Teira and Teira Er over there. You see top right over there. You see, those are the Mamaram of the Alter Rebbe. We have many more Mamaram, but those are the Mamaram from the Alter Rebbe, which were printed by his grandson, the Tzemach Sadak. So Teira Er is on Bereshis and Shemois, and Lakutia Teira is in Vayikra, Bamidbar, Dvarim, and Shir Hashirim. A whole bunch of Mamaram and Shir Hashirim. Just no, there is no not, not Kehelas, not Mishli, not Rus. So from this week, everybody in this room going to say Shirashirim? Why not? There's no, Take there's no why. There, there's definitely nothing wrong with saying Shirashirim on Friday afternoon. If it's your minute, yeah. great. And if it's, it's not your minute, minute, you can also do it. Okay. Like Sorry? You say the full sukkim of um, Shirashirim um, right before uh, Marv. Right, right before Kabbalah Shabbos. Which show? Um, there were four uh, there were sukkim. Sukkim, sukkim. I hear. It's not, it's not a Nusachari. But um, certain people would say it at different times, Shir Hashirim. The Rebbe said that his father used to say Shir Hashirim always after the Seder, the whole Shir Hashirim. Wow. After what? It's after the Seder. It's so serious. Although it's not a Minik Chabad. I mean, the there's nothing is. wrong with it, but it's, it's not, it's not an established Minik Chabad. It's in the Pesach... Uh, Haggadah. Haggadah. Yeah, Shir Hashirim again. It was. It's yeah. yeah. in the Haggadah. Haggadah. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Haggadah. 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 So you have great tzaddikim who are experiencing this higher level of Avas Hashem. We're returning back to, uh, to our topic over here. Who there, so there are great tzaddikim who experience this higher level of Avas Hashem. Remember, we spoke about two levels of Avas Hashem. The higher level is the essential gilui of the neshama, the gilui of the essential love of the neshama. And then there is the lower level of love, which is the love which is created through his boininus. However, as we spoke by last year, even a tzaddik is also has to move to higher levels. You know, we think, ah, oh, I'm in a bad place, I have to move higher. But the truth is, no, 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 you have to move higher because you're a yid, and a yid, is going from strength to strength, not because there's something wrong with where he was yesterday, but because since that's where he was yesterday, today he has to move higher. So great tzaddikim, they're also, within that higher level of Ava, they're moving not only sequentially higher, but they're making quantum leaps. But the problem with making quantum leaps is, as mentioned, that when you reach the higher level, you haven't yet mastered it. You're in a state of nefila, sheva yipel tzaddik v'kam. You're in a state of what you call katnus. You're in a state of um, immaturity, because you have not fully experienced that higher level, you've not mastered that higher level. It takes time. 
So what keeps the tzaddik going Where does he go from there? when he's in that state of nefila? He's in a state of flux. So now we understand. <laughs> there's, we're saying there's two levels of ava. There is the mature level of ava, and there's a chinuch level of ava. The chinuch level of ava, the lower level of ava, is the level of ava which is reached by a person through his boydinus, through meditation and contemplation. When the tzaddik is in the state of nefila, because He's moving quantumly through his levels. He needs to, he's relying on, he falls back upon his chinuch ava, the lower level of ava, the ava he's used to from when he, from in his youth, the ava which is generated and created through his, his boininus, through his awareness of Hashem, and contemplation of Hashem's greatness and of Hashem's love. So that's how the Atreb explains the Pasuk. Yeah, when someone is on a low spiritual level, so you have to educate him according to that spiritual level, which means a lower level of Ava. But Gam Kiyaskin, and note the words, Gam Kiyaskin, it doesn't say Gam Kiyazokin, Lo Yasrim Mena. What is Gam Kiyazokin, Lo Yasrim Mena? Also, when, he, when he's old, he won't. No, what is Gam Kiyaskin? What does the word Yaskin mean? While he's, while he's getting old. The word Yaskin. It's a verb. Yeah. While he, in other words, while he is getting old, while he's moving from one level to another level, yeah. then, yeah, then at that point, he'll be able to fall back upon that original Ava that he had in the first place. Which is why, I guess the point over here that the Rebbe is saying is that this basic Ava which we have, which is expected of all of us, which is to be able to understand the greatness of Hashem, and understand Hashem's love for us, and contemplate both of those, to arrive at Ava, every single person has to have that. Obviously, for those of us who are on the lower level, we're not tzaddik, and we haven't reached a higher level of love, that's our regular avoda. But even the tzaddik, who has a higher level of love, he also has the need for, the for this lower level of love, for those times when he's in the next state of nefila, because he's in the process of moving from one level to a quantumly higher level in his Havayda Sashem. So what the, 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 the takeaway is the importance of this lower level of Ava for everyone. That everyone has to be able to cultivate Ava for Hashem, which is based on Chabad, based on Chachma Bin Adas, based on the understanding of the greatness of Hashem and contemplating Hashem's greatness and contemplating Hashem's love for us. That fills the vacuum. That fills the vacuum, yes. Not only the vacuum, but also when you're at the very beginning of the next level. And before you fully mastered it, that's what you have to fall on. Now let's do this inside. Look, we're gonna start, we'll, we'll go back a little. We'll do a little what we did last time. We're going to start on page Ayin Vav, second column, five lines from the top. Ah, however, hine yadu al yoidim. It is known to those who know, time of the Kra, the meaning of the Pasuk, my Dixiv, that which it says, Kisheva Yipil Sadik Vikam. The Tzadik falls seven times and he stands up. So like we said last time, the Al Rebbe emphasized, those who know understand this Pasuk, because most people think that this Pasuk means that a Tzadik is going boom and he falls. That people no, that doesn't mean that a Tzadikim don't fall. It's only that when a Tzadik is in a state of ascendancy, as he says. Because a person is, especially a person who's called Mahalich, a person always has to be moving upwards, not standing in one place. Has to go from one level to another. And not to stand on one level. By the way, as a side note, the Rebbe said many times that really there's no such thing as standing in one place. You're, you're either moving up or you're going down. Yeah. And if you're not going up, I think we all know this, uh, in fact. If we're spinning our wheels, we're, uh, after a little while, what? from experience, experience, we find that we've fallen. We're saying that a tzaddik doesn't go down. We see in Tanakh, um, in the Chumash and, and Nach, that, that any number of people went down. Ruvain had a, a Misa, Yehuda had a Misa, David Amelech had a Misa. Throughout Tanakh, we see that Sadiqim went down, but then they realized, and they did shuv and they went up. So, Okay, I guess what, what I'm saying over here is, so let me redact a little of what I said. A tzaddik doesn't have to go down. Shavi, in other words, the pasuk shavi yipot tzaddik become it almost sounds like a tzaddik. Oh, boom! That's that's the way. No, yeah, maybe it can happen that sometimes a tzaddik will have a nefila, but that's not what this pasuk means. This pasuk means that when it says when he's talking here about the, the, the that the, the way is that the tzaddik will fall seven times necessarily 
That, that's talking about in the course of his alias. Is it possible for an nefila? Yeah. yeah. Whatever that means. Obviously, it's not an nefila on our terms. It's an nefila on the tzaddik's terms. But the Al-Tarab is saying that that's not what this pasuk means. This pasuk is referring to a tzaddik who is going higher and higher. But between, as you'll say inside, Uvein madrega la madrega. Between levels, Terem she'egiye la madrega al-yenemimena. Before he reaches or masters the higher level, Uvein nefila ma madrega ha You've fallen, even relative to your previous level. Ah, however, the Pasuk says in Tehillim, The Pasuk says that even when the Tzaddik falls, He doesn't remain lying on the ground. He's not abandoned. When we're saying that there's a Nefila, it's Ella that's only It's only relative to his previous level. Not relative to all other people. We can imagine Reb Zayda, even after he learned, uh, you know, he, he, he forgot the whole time of Bavli, he was still greater than other people. <laughs> right? That definitely the tzaddik is higher than all other people with his avayda. Why? Because he still has the residue, what's left over from his earlier madriga. Ah, however, Ikra, the main thing that keeps the tzaddik going during the state of Nefila is Mi'ava, Shenishanech, Vuhurgo Bamin Urav. Is the Ava that he was educated with and he became accustomed to from his youth. The Terem Shigi Al Madriga Sandik. Before he arrived at the level of Tzaddik, in other words, the first level of Ava that we discussed, Vizel Shekosov, and that's why it says Gamki Yaskin Vigimir. As we mentioned, that's why it says, it doesn't say as he is gaskin, as he is aging, as he is growing, right? Rabbi, why it said Sheva is Sheva is for every day of the week, and Shabbat is the seventh day. Maybe it's. I'm sure that uh, it's connected because all numbers are connected, but I have not seen that yet. Okay, so we need to awaken the Ava. Why is it Tzadik fall? When you say not fall, but he's falling down to that moderation. Why is he falling? Because he's grown. Yeah. So why is that moderation still going to keep him? Why does it stop over there? What, what makes that a flaw? If everything to grow, you have to delete the past. You can't get up so unless Why is that not going to delete it too? It's true. Yeah, yeah, what you're saying is, is correct. That's a good question. What's he saying? Yeah. He's saying if you moved away from all your madrigas, you also have to move away from from the original madriga of Chinuch Ava. That's the so apparently that's not a stir. In other words, because it's so elementary, you need to move away from where, from where you were previously. But the very basic foundation which you've established for your life is always there. You don't have to move away from that in order to go there. I know that this is not with a lot of Havana Vazbara. When you renovate a house, you don't re renovate the, uh, the, you be renovating the, how the, uh, the, the house looks, but the foundation you leave. Always, yeah. In other words, yeah, you're saying, let, let's say you, <laughs> put in the, let's say you want to put in a new decor in your house. So one way of doing it is, okay, so let me put up a new picture over here, a new picture over here, but that's not a quantum leap. You want to, you want to really renovate it, you have to gut the place, which is an afila. In other words, before the house is beautiful, and now when you got the place, until you... It's ugly. It's ugly until you put up the new place, right? But the foundation remains taki. He has a point. I did see somewhere that it's explained... Yeah. I, I did see there's someone who explained that the reason why this is the Yusoid and why it's more durable, why the lower level is more durable than the higher level is because of the Maila of Avoida Satachten. Avoida Satachten. Maila of our Avoida. As um, well, as the pasuk says in Iyer, that Hashem says, which means that if you think into it, the first level of Ava is our Avedah, we create it. The higher level of Ava is a Matana from above, which then raises a different question. How are we doing quantum leaps in a Matana? But that, when we come, you come at Tzadik, you'll figure out the answer to that question. <laughs> but the bottom line is, uh, even though the higher level is a higher level, there is a value and a preciousness to the lower level which is that it's the product of our work, and Hashem treasures and values more than anything our Avaita. And in, in terms of Dira the lower level of Ava has actually advantage over the higher level of Ava.
could say simply the lower level supports the higher level. Yeah, that's right. But the, but whatever. It's a good question. We can examine, explore different answers. But Lepoyal, that's what Alter Rebbe says over here. So we need to create. We need to create this lower. The, what we established is we need to create this lower a level of Ava. Everyone needs to. Even if you, one day you plan on being a tzaddik. I don't know. Maybe some people are already tzaddikim. But uh, even if one day we plan on being tzaddikim, the lower level of Ava always remains important because even when we become tzaddikim and we're going to go from one level to the next, we're still going to have to fall back. So this lower level of Ava, which is created through his bindinus, we all have to create. How do we do that? Says the Alter Rebbe, Vini Reishis Hadvarim, Hama'erim Ha'ava Vayira. How do we start to awaken Ava and Yira? V'yisoydan, and the very foundation of Ava Vayira? Yamuna Hatahira V'namana is the pure and faithful Amuna V'yichudai V'achdusai Yisbarach V'yisala in Hashem's unity. It all starts with having a correct emuna in what it means Hashem Echad, and what it means Enoid Movader. Once we have a correct perception and understanding, and emuna, in other words, our emuna, sometimes you can have emuna, but you have a totally wrong emuna, you don't, because you have no idea what's the, what, the, what really it's all about. Once you have the emuna, and then you can be misboinen. Contemplate all this. Contemplate after Hashem. Contemplate Hashem's love for us, and then you arrive at a Ava Hashem. Let me finish. And that's why. And that's how. That's this is this sets up the whole Shaykh of Amuna. The next twelve prakim, we're in. The Rebbe is going to talk to us about the Achtus of Hashem. What it means, Hashem Echad. In fact, we're going to learn about two different levels of Hashem Echad. What the Zayir calls Yehuda Ilah. And Yehuda Tata, Yehuda Ilah is Shema Yisrael Hashem Malakino Hashem Echad, a higher level of unity, lower, li, lower level of unity, which is alluded to in Bar Hashem Kavod Machus Yelayim Vod, and we're going to learn about both of them. And by the time we finish learning the twelve Prakim Shari Yichel Emunah, the Alter Rebbe says you will have a firm foundation, you will have the correct Emuna, and then you will have what to contemplate, and thereby awaken within yourself a Avas Hashem Al Kaponim, the slower level of Avas Hashem. Now, yeah. The ar- yeah. What strikes me immediately is that the average young person, five-year-old, um, you know, very young person, is not learning the next 12 chapters of the Tanya. And if that's the basic level, the fundamental level of Amuna, of, of Yichud Habore, then, um, and if that's the lower level, then none of us have that lower level from when we're right. Young. So I mean, when the Alter Rebbe is saying he's learning this pasuk al pichsidus. The nar here doesn't mean a six-year-old child. Nar means the beginning of your avoda. That's all of us here. He, he, he's moving it away from pasuk shat, and he's saying the beginning level of of, of avoda Hashem when you call a nar is this lower level of avoda Hashem. Then there's yaskin. There's a more mature level of avoda Hashem. More mature level of avoda Hashem. But ultimately, we're not talking about um, as the, uh, passport years, but we're talking about uh, whether you're a, a child, mature, immature, in your Aved HaShem. So, we finished over here what's called the Chinuch Katan, and Amir Tashem next year, which will be coming up a week from today. Next year. Next year, yeah. We'll be uh, starting Perek Aleph, but we have some time left on the clock. So let's give over a little, uh, little Vart, Benigay to Rosh Hashanah. I believe unrelated, although everything in Torah is related. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll make some uh, some connections. You're good. At, you're doing the good connections tonight. Yeah. So, on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the Haftarah that we read is um, the story of Hannah giving birth to Shmuel and the Shira that Hannah said. Eli, yes. And we know the Gemara says, Mesechtas Brachas, that we learn many, many different halachas which regard to davening from the Tefillah of Hana. Lash in the Gemara from Mary is like, Kama, Hilchas, Rav Ravasa, or something of that sort. How many important halachas, Menegei Tefillah, do we learn from Hana? For example, the fact that 
Okay. We daven quietly, right? But we have to be, we have to, yeah. No, face the wall, I think we learn from Chizkiah. But al him. many different halachas we learn from Chana. And the question is why? What was so special about Chana? There, the Torah tells us about the tefillahs of many people, for example, going back to Yiravayakav uh, Avinu, Vayifkav Amalakim Ahuz, right? So, and then we have even earlier than that, Yitzchak, Yitzchak, right? Vayatar Yitzchak, what? Suach Basada. Right, he's Suach Basada, that's for correct, and also later when he daven for children, him and Rivka together. And many, many times, Moshe daven to, to, to Hashem. And nevertheless, the Allah is for tefillah. We learned dafka, so many of them we learned dafka from tefillah's chana, which raises the obvious question what is so special about the tefillah of chana? So the Rebbe speaks about this. The Rebbe in general, the Rebbe spoke a lot about this after The Rebbe's mother's yard site is Vav Tishrei. And the Rebbe's mother's name was Chana. So what? Was also Chana and her your site's Vav Tishrei. Really? Yeah, my mother's mother. Which year? Uh, about 20 years ago. Right. The Rebbe's mother passed away in 1964. So the Rebbe very often, whether in Rosh Hashanah or the Rebbe would also fabring for his mother's yard site, the Rebbe would speak about Tfiel's, about, about Chana. Yeah. So the Rebbe says that in Chana's tefillah we find something very unique. Something which we don't find elsewhere. And that is one, a certain aspect of Chana's tefillah that when she daven to Hashem, she asked for Zera Anashem. And this Chazal say, now what does it mean Zera Anashem? Chazal tell us that means we know the word Anashem is always equated with Tzadikim, like Bechar Lanu Anashem. Or Havu uh, Lachem Anashim. Anashim always means Tzadikim, like by the Meraglim. Kulam Anashim, so we say Ksherim Hayu. Anashim means uh, Tzadikim. She asked Hashem for a child who's going to be a Tzadik. No more and no less. That's what she requested. Talk about uh, you know, reaching for the stars. She's coming and asking Hashem for a kid. So you think that she tell Hashem, you know, I want a kid, whatever. No. She was very specific. She said, I want a child, and I want a child who's going to be a tzaddik. And guess what happened? The tefillah was, was in the skabal, was accepted, and it was fulfilled. And she had a child who was not, not stam a tzaddik, but as Chazal tell us, that uh, Shmuel was on par with Moshe and Aaron together. To give you an idea of the greatness of Shmuel. Why is it so remarkable that this request of hers was accepted? And Eli told her, go home, your tefillah will be naskava. Why is that remarkable? It's remarkable because Hannah asked for something that was impossible. Absolutely impossible. We know that it's brought down in the Gemara, famous Gemara, Mesachtas Nida, that before the tzaddik, the, sorry, the malach, hamamun al the malach that is um, put in charge of the pregnancy, he comes before a child is born, he brings, uh, brings the drop to Hashem from which the child will be created and he asks Hashem, no, give me the specs for this child, tell me. Give me the, give me the DNA code. <laughs> is the child going to be short? Is it going to be tall? Is it going to be smart? Is it going to be stupid? Is it going to be... Uh, is, uh, who is the child going to marry? Him? Where is the child going to live? And where is... Uh, what kind of... Part? Not everything. It's all pre-programmed. All the data is there before in advance. But as the Gemara says very clearly and very emphatically, that Sadik Virasha Leika Amar, that the child, the Malach does not ask Hashem to determine in advance whether the child is going to be a Sadik or a Rasha. And why is that? Because Bechira Chavshis we all have free will. will. Free will, right? I believe this week's parasha talks about right. Reina Sati Lefnecha Ma'ayim Misachayim Misatayim Misamav Misara Ubacharta Bachayim. Every single person is given free choice. And uh, in the words of the Rabbim, every single person can be a tzaddik, like Moshe Rabbeinu, or could be a rasha, like Yeravim ben Nevat. And no one is pre-programmed. There's no such thing as a person being pre-programmed that he's a tzaddik or a rasha. Now, we do know from Tanya that there are certain people who are born with special neshamas, meaning that their neshama has a potential to be a very, very great tzaddik. But that's a potential which the person has to work upon in order to actualize 
There is no free ride, what? As a predisposition. No, it doesn't even mean a predisposition. That means, uh, by way of example, um, if you decided that you want to be a, a painter like, uh, like Rembrandt, even if you work for 50 years, that you won't necessarily get there. Not, maybe you, but the saying is, you need a certain talent in that area in order to be able to get there. So the tzaddik is someone who has, you want to call it a talent, or a certain anashama that, that if the tzaddik works hard enough, it can reach that level. Not everyone can reach that. We don't have that talent. If you don't have the talent, you can't get there. Right. If you don't have that special neshama, like some people have a special artist neshama, and therefore they can, if they work hard, they can become Rembrandt. But Rembrandt wouldn't have been Rembrandt. He wouldn't have, with all, the, with all the natural skill that he had, he had to develop it, he had to work in it. Same thing with a tzaddik. But no one is born... As it's uh, with the, you know with ha with it having been decreed in advance, the person is a tzaddik, as the as the Rambam rightfully points out that if Hashem were to decree in advance that well, this person should be a tzaddik and this person should be a rasha, that would make a mockery of the whole concept of schar v'yoynish of uh, reward and punishment. Why is this guy being rewarded for being a tzaddik if he was programmed to be a tzaddik? Why is this person um, being punished for being a rasha if he's programmed to be a rasha? What about Moshe? In fact. In fact, uh, in fact, the um, the um, the Rambam says that this is a big ikir. It's a big ikir. This idea. I don't. Maybe is a good question. Maybe he was. He was also human. He also had uh, human. Okay, let's do, let's leave Moshe Rabbeinu out of this uh, conversation for a moment. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Now, well, sometimes we daven. And we ask Hashem for things that are impossible. Let's say there's a person who uh, the doctors gave up on. Doctors said there's no hope. We're asking Hashem for the impossible. We know the we know the we know the the Gemara says that the imois were akaris. Our imois, our mothers were akaris. Which means that it was physically impossible for them to give birth. Like they're, they're born without wombs. So when Yitzchak davened for a child, he was davening for the impossible. And yet Hashem gave it to him. That's very special. But a physical impossibility is a much smaller hurdle to cross than a spiritual Torah impossibility. What's an example? In other words, Hashem... Can, Hashem can make a miracle, and a person who, uh, who uh, there, there's a certain physical impossibility that a person can't give birth, will give birth. A person who doctors say there's no chance to give, you know, the sea can't split, I'm gonna split, I'm gonna, I'm gonna split the sea. Those are all physical impossibilities. But then there are Torah impossibilities, such as that every single person has free choice. It's impossible for a person to be born Pre-programmed. Torah decided that. That's what Hashem decided in Torah. That's a much bigger impossibility than a physical impossibility. It's the ultimate impossibility. It's an impossibility that precedes the world. Because Torah is Kadma Lo'elam. Nevertheless, came along this lady, Chana, and she, with chutzpah, brazenly turns to Hashem and says, Hashem, I want you to do the impossible for me. I want you to give me a child, and I want you to guarantee there's going to be a tzaddik. And it happened. Why did it happen? Chassidus explained that what is the idea of a, that, 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 that the essence of tefillah is conveyed in the words Yehi Ratzin, which we say a lot of times during davening. What does the word Yehi Ratzin mean? Yehi Ratzin means we ask Hashem, Yehi Ratzin, there should be a new will. Whatever you willed until this point, I'm asking you right now that you should want something else. So even though it's impossible, okay, beforehand you, th you wished that it should be impossible. And I want right now, there should be a Ratzin Chodesh, Yehi Ratzin, there should be a new Ratzin, and with this new Ratzin that comes, that issues forth, now it becomes a possibility. Nothing illustrates, no tefillah, which is brought down in Tanakh, illustrates the power of tefillah as much as does tefillah Shana who accomplished the impossible, not only the physically impossible, but even the spiritually impossible, through her tefillah. And that's one of the reasons why we talk about this tefillah on Rosh Hashanah. When we're coming and we're asking Hashem for a new year. And we turn to Hashem and we say, 
Yehi Ratzon. We're davening to you. I don't know what was, I don't know what the Xero was beforehand and what's possible and what's impossible and what's physically impossible and what's spiritually impossible. None of those matter. Because we know that when a Yid davens, we have the ability to accomplish even that which is impossible. In fact, you know, we said talks to the Gemara says, as you know, Tzadik Geyser, Kadosh Baruch Mekayim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Geyser, V'Tzadik Mevatel. Hashem, Hashem says one thing, and the tzaddik is mevatel, and the amich kulam tzaddikim, we're all tzaddikim, and we have our, with our tefillahs, and this is uh, as we approach Rosh Hashanah, and we're asking Hashem for an tefillahs, and we can also daven for, and we ask Hashem also, even though that it says that uh, we can, you can't daven that Hashem to make you into a tzaddik, right? Because it needs our own work. It's impossible. We can daven for that also. We daven for, daven for everything, and we talk we should be poil for us and for all of ours and for Kal Yisrael, we should all exhibit some Matayva and should be here Ratzin. Whatever the Ratzin was until now, the now the Ratzin should be the year of goodness, Matayva and the year of Enigla for us all, a year of Geula, a year of Yeshua, a year of Rufus, and Barachas, Matayva and the year of Enigla for all of us. Yeah. But Hannah, when she asks Hashem, says, I want, I'm praying to have a child, she has a condition there. Give me this child, I'm going to give it to you. So it's it's not like I want a child because I'm a, I want to be a mother. If you give me a child, the child is yours. Let's give me a child. You do the same thing. <coughs> Turn to Hashem and say, I want health. You know why I want health? Right. I want to serve you. Sorry. I want money. You know why I want money? Give to the I want money so I should be able to, uh, be able to not have to worry about all the Everything that we're asking is all fresh. Everything we ask is all for Hashem. Yes, yes. That's another sikha from the Rebbe, by the way, on the Tulas Chana. Yeah, but why? talks about this like aspect. Well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but how could you ask for Shini Tevra if you have to have merit for that? No, you don't. The, it's explained, I've said this many places, the difference between Bracha and Tefillah. That for Bracha, in order to give a Bracha, you have to be a, a big tzaddik. Bracha means, the word Bracha literally comes from the word Maverick, which means to draw, your, like, uh, to draw down. So if you want to draw down the flow from somewhere, you have to be above the place where you're drawing it from. What do you mean by that? Meaning if you want to draw down, let's say that I want to give you a bracha. So I want to draw down a flow from the world of Atsilos onto you. The only way I can do that is if I'm either in the world of Atsilos or higher. Then I have the ability because I'm at the level, I can push it down to you. Yeah. So bracha is something which is pre-existing, by the way. In other words, there's a flow which is... Bracha, the definition of bracha is just a flow which is predestined for you. But for whatever reason, it's not reaching you. So the tzaddik can push it down to you. That's a bracha. Tefillah is there's nothing pre-existing, as we explained. That's in bracha and tefillah. That's why it says, by Yaakov, you know, ish asher ki berach Yaakov gave everyone the bracha that was their bracha. What do you mean that was their bracha? Yaakov, why couldn't Yaakov give Don's uh, bracha to Zvulun and vice versa? No, because Yaakov identified in each one what's in their shayrish, and he was pushing it down to them. So he had to know by each one what their, their, their unique bracha. So a bracha is something which is pre-existing, and you need to have the power to draw it down. Tefillah is different in two ways. Number one, it's not pre-existing. You hear Ratzon, I'm saying it doesn't make a difference. It's yeah in the source, it's not in the source. I want a new flow, a new Ratzon to issue forth from Hashem, and anyone can daven. Not only anyone could, everyone should. It's a mitzvah, everyone has to daven. So you don't have to have koyach. Come to the Ebrister and say, I'm your son. And I'm davening, I'm asking you here, us, and this is what I want. And, uh, but you have to be worthy of it. For she and Tevi, you, you have didn't to be hear worthy. a word of what I just said, did you? It was you. <laughs> he was asleep. It is like a boom. Yeah. The, I was on a quiet No, week. I'm telling you to give a bracha, you have to be in a madriga. To daven, every yid comes and daven. What well, you said about your rutsun takes up the 